What's going on guys? G2 here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about and see the difference between installing grips using the air method and the traditional solvent method. They are two completely different animals, but is there a difference in the cost? You might be surprised. Now I do want a disclaimer before we get into this video that if you use solvent, you cannot use air to remove solvent installed grips it's one or the other guys you can't play in both camps and have them both work so i just want to make sure you do that please do not try to remove a grip that has been installed with solvent with air you will instantly regret that decision uh so let's uh shoot over to the bench be the right club today yes the materials that you need for the two processes so we're going to start with air so the first thing that you need is a compressor like this. Okay, the typical hot dog compressor or pancake compressor is more than enough to do a set of clubs. An adapter. You're, when you buy your compressor, they usually come with a hose and uh, fittings and all that stuff. And if it doesn't, you can buy that fairly cheap. It, it's hardly any cost associated with that. Now the adapter here, this is what I use. This comes off, right? So it's just, you can change out the tips or whatever. So it comes with this nice long tip, which fits perfectly into the vent hole of the grip, right? And then you just simply squeeze down and the air goes in. So this is also easily purchased on Amazon or at a hardware store. And it's usually located in your air compressor accessories aisle. You also need build-up tape. Now this is the build-up tape that I use. This is from Golfworks. It is a little bit more expensive than what a lot of people I see using masking tape. Now why masking tape is not a good alternative to this or replacement for this is simply because of the thickness. Masking tape is extremely thin. To be exact, it's about 0 0.008 inches in terms of thickness. Whereas this buildup tape is 0 0.015 inches in thickness. Now why that's important is this tape is exactly the same thickness as double-sided tape that you would traditionally use. So, to get one layer of this, you have to use two layers of masking tape. That's why this is superior. It keeps your measurements consistent. You also need to have a vise and a clamp. So, a vise is, I just use this, it's a drill press vise. You can buy this again at any one of your hardware stores. And then, you know, I'm sure everyone has one of these laying around. If you buy grip, uh, packs online or Amazon they always come with one of these and they fit right here in your vise and you put the club in there and the clamp first it's not always the easiest get bored okay and then you put that in your vise you clamp it down and now you can do your work so for bare bones, that's what you're gonna need to do it with air. Now, if you wanna upgrade yourself, make it easier, you can get this auto clamp that I have right here from Golfworks. And this is so simple because it reduces you having to take this on and off and screwing this and tightening it up. You simply just put the club in the clamp and clamp it down and it's in place, it's not going anywhere. And then to take it off, you just quick release it and you're off. So that is another thing that you can use if you really wanna get into this and save yourself a tremendous amount of time, this would be the way to go. Now for the traditional method, you need to have solvent, right? Double-sided tape, vise, and a clamp. Now if you want to, you can again use this clamp and if you want to take it one step further you can invest in a drip tray 
Now, why the drip tray is good is because it sets up right behind your clamp here. And as you're regripping, your club sits like this over the drip tray. All of your solvent, which without this is going into a bucket or on the floor, or maybe into a, uh, on a towel or whatever, it's dripping down into this vent hole. And that vent hole has a tube that goes into a catch basin. So yes, solvent is reusable. And sometimes you may get some particles or stuff in there. What I do is I filter this out, just use some steel wool and run it through, and then you end up with nice, clean solvent. It's no big deal. Now let's talk about the time that it takes to do installation of a grip and removal of the grip. Now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna do this live so you can see exactly how long each process takes. So let me move the camera over here so you get a good look. All right, so for both of these applications, I have already put the tape on each club. As a tip for you guys to make either process easier, what I do is I cut my strips to nine inch lengths right off the bat and I'll just stick them to the side of my table here so I have them ready to go so I'm not going back and forth with cutting tape. So I have my tape already prepped. This is normally what my process would look like. For starters, what we're gonna do is we are gonna start from the clamped position, right? So we're gonna use this process, which is already, I know, quicker than the other, and we'll get our club lined up, and we'll start with the installation of the air. Ready to go, we'll start the timer. So we'll start it in three, two, one. So we put the air hose into the grip. We put the grip on the butt end and... Done. So that's it, air on. Ready to go. I can swing this club right now. Now to remove it, right? How easy is it to remove it? How fast? All right, so we'll clamp and we'll start in three, two, one. Done. Grip is off. And the best thing about this, I can use this grip again. Now we're gonna go to the solvent method, so we don't need this. Now for the solvent method, I'm gonna use my drip tray, all right? We already have our solvent here. I'm using an old grip, and most of you probably know why I'm gonna use an old grip, especially if we're gonna remove it. Um, <clears throat> so we'll start from the clamped position, and first thing we're gonna have to do, as soon as I say go, is take the double-sided tape off of this. Three, two, one, let's go. All right, taking the tape off. Tape is off. Now, put a little solvent on the tape. So, we'll put some in the grip. Shake it up. Solvent. Let's find the center of the grip. Okay, we're done. So that is done. Clean it off. Okay, now we're done. Now this grip, you know, and I know, I can't use this, right? I can't use this grip for at least 30 minutes to an hour. Whereas with air, I'm already on the range hitting balls. So one of the good things about that is all of that solvent I just used is gone into my reserve down at the bottom and I can reuse that solvent as much as I want. Start our removal process. Hook blade and three, two, one. Okay, done. Now, 
fortunately, this grip is no longer able to be used, right? You and I both know that. Now, if you wanna try to save a grip, that's a whole nother process that I'm not even gonna put into the consideration because I know that is a losing venture. So now with this tape, um, what we would have to do at this point, if we wanted to regrip it, right? Because unlike air, I can't regrip over top of this. I have to take it off and install a new piece of tape. Torture something that solvent on there is still a little. Active, I guess, um, but that'll help it come off a little easier. All right, it's okay, I guess. Still needs a lot of cleanup, right? You guys get the point. Let's talk now about the cost, and we're gonna do this two ways: one with the bare bones, and one with some of those upgraded features, so you can see the cost difference between the two. So for the air, it's simple. You need the air compressor. Uh, you need the adapter, your build-up tape. Um, you're going to need your vise and your clamps. Now, if you want to get this GolfWorks Auto Clamp, that's going to put you out about $80. So with all of this, without the Auto Clamp, you're at $99. If you add on the Auto Clamp and take away the vise and this guy, so you're right around $140. Now, for the traditional method, you're gonna need solvent. This HF100 by Brampton is, in my opinion, the best solvent on the market, and this gallon jug will run you 30 bucks. Your double-sided tape, then your vise and your clamp. So for solvent, you're at $67. Right now, you're running about $30 cheaper than you would with air because you're not buying a compressor. Now, if you wanted to add on the auto clamp, which is $80, and then the drip tray, right, that we used, that'll run you another $22. So you're somewhere in the neighborhood of $145. From a cost perspective for air and traditional method, the air is only slightly more expensive. So, the cons. Now there are not a lot of cons for either of these. You know, we'll start with the traditional solvent method, the wait time, right? You have to wait before you can use the club. Um, for some of you that may matter, for some of you it may not. The other thing is it's very hard to reuse grips. Now, when you're paying only 46 cents to put it on, you're paying for this grip, right? Anywhere between, if you get a cheapo, $3 all the way up to $13 per grip. That's where your costs really start to inflate. So the ability to be able to reuse grips just for simple things like a reshafting or uh, making the grip thicker. If it's worn, it's worn, it's trash. That's good for both cases. But in those odd balls where you're like, oh, I gotta lengthen the club, yeah, you're losing a perfectly good grip if you need to lengthen a club that has been done traditionally. Now, some of the cons for air, you can't do this on all kinds of grips. So for like your standard tour velvets, perfectly fine. Air will work fine. Even your cords air will work fine, though they're a little bit firmer. Um, when you do something like cord, it doesn't quite inflate as much. So maybe you do use just a touch of solvent or soap or something just to help lubricate it, uh, but perfectly fine with cord. Now where air will not work is with wind grips and obviously putter grips. Now the other myth for the uh, air method is that people say it tends to slip. Right, so the, the tip of the, the butt of the grip will turn as you impact. And that's false, okay? The people who are doing that are using masking tape. And that goes back to my original comment where I said, use build-up tape. This is 0.015 inches thick, where this is 
0.008 inches thick and people just assume one layer of this equals one traditional layer of tape and that's just false. So they say it's slipping at the top because they have not filled that in enough with the appropriate thickness of tape. Now, some pros. For the traditional method, it's, it's tried and true. We know it. We know it works, we know it's great. We know that this grip, when it is installed correctly, is not gonna go anywhere. Well, some could argue the same for air, but we'll say for some of those slipper guys, uh, it's not going anywhere once it's dried. And the other obvious pro is you can use it for all the grips. Doesn't matter which grip you're using. Now some pros for air. You can easily save and reuse your grips. You think about how many grips that you can save and reuse one grip alone you're saving ten dollars off the bat boom uh, a, a golf pride multi-compound thirteen dollars saved no problem so the cost with that i think outweighs any other thing that i'm going to talk about here the other one it's fast right you just saw how fast that was for me to take it off and put it on and then the obvious thing is the compressor can be used for other things. You can use the compressor to, you know, your bench is dirty. Blow off your bench. You can use it to fill up your car tires. You can use it to fill up your wheelbarrow tires. It's not just gonna be used for this. You're gonna use it for a bunch of other things down the line. So regardless of which camp you're in, solvent, air, maybe you're in both like I am, I think they both have an application that is uh, worth talking about. I think for the hobbyist, air is the way to go because it gives you way more flexibility, especially if you like to tinker with grip sizes, club lengths. You're not going to be wasting your grips. Grips are expensive. You can spend anywhere from $100 to $250 just in the grips. If you're able to save that money on one repair, you've paid for everything. The one thing I do want to stress is that if you use the traditional method, you cannot use air to take off a grip that has been put on with solvent. That will not work. It will never work. It is going to be a catastrophic error. Please don't ever try to do that. But if you always use air, you are totally in the clear. You don't have anything to worry about. It just makes your life so much simpler. But you do what is best for you. So if you have any questions, comments, want to see another video at your request, let me know. Leave it below. Until next time, make sure that you swing as hard as you can, just in case you hit the ball. G2.